I want to speak about uh, light and the darkness, okay? And um, if I ramble on, uh, as my wife tells me sometimes, I ramble on, uh, uh, I'll try to stop myself. But um, basically, um, we know that Jesus is the light. We know that Jesus is the way, and he is the truth, and he is the life, okay? And... Um, And, you know, a lot of people are in darkness. I mean, like, I'll say this. People come to church every Sunday. They come in here. They come in through other churches, through other cities, other states. And they say, yes, I'm Christian. I love the Lord. But they walk out. And it seems like they just, like, the Lord's not with them when they go out. That's the way that some people's lives are. Like, they don't keep Jesus with them. They don't. Like, yes, they praise Jesus when they go to church. They give worship to the Lord. But then when they go out there, it's like they're back in their past. They're back into their old selves. And they're back in darkness. So I'm just going to read what I wrote last night because the Holy Spirit revealed this to me over the course of a week. And then I'm going to go to scripture. Uh, so, so I'll just start reading and then just let the Holy Spirit take over. All right, so I wrote down, some people stay in darkness because they don't fully trust Jesus Christ with their lives. They trust the world or trust their old selves, their old lives, the old lives before they met Jesus. They also see their darkness as a safe place to hide their sins, their pain, their suffering. And the devil, he loves seeing people in darkness. He loves influencing them to stay in darkness and the person doesn't even know it. Satan will repeatedly put doubt in a person's mind and make them believe that their sins, pain, and suffering can't be healed or taken away by Christ. I felt that many a times. A person can keep hoping for change in their life, but no change will come if they have no faith in Christ. And the results are always clear, no matter who you are. And the results, are, the results are when you have faith in Christ and faith in his ways, you clearly see what is good and what is evil and stay away from the evil. And you stay away from the ways that, well, I said, you stay away from the evil way you used to think and live and allow the Lord to give you a new nature, a godly and holy nature because you trusted him with your life and well-being. And then when you don't have faith, this is the other side of it, when you don't have faith in Jesus and refuse to trust his ways and teachings, then you will keep hoping for something else to help you, something worldly that is not godly or righteous or holy. And without and without you even knowing, the devil has plainly, no, the devil has plenty of ways to set you up for failure with your life. And I'll say this, and I wrote this down, it says, he has plenty of ways to set you f up for failure in your life and even possibly kill you in one way or another. So you will not even have another chance to seek Jesus Christ. So along with that, the things that are in darkness, I mean like that are part of the darkness are these things. I listed them here. Stress, low self-esteem, depression, anxiety, worry, 
anger, rage, unforgiveness, bitterness. Those te two things seem to go hand in hand, unforgiveness and bitterness. Um, any type of addiction, and uh, any type of addiction would be called idolatry or worsh worshiping, whatever you're addicted to. Um, and then the last one I put was hard for me to put, but I had to put it, suicidal thoughts. Okay, so. But I'm going to go into scripture here because now that we know what darkness is, all right, and we want to stay away from those things, and we know that people are out there in darkness, and I'm telling you, man, sometimes it's hard for people to grasp on to Jesus because they think that dark place is their safe place. Like they feel safe in that little corner or they still feel safe all alone, all locked in their room or something like that. So, but in order for Jesus Christ to work, to put in work, then they have to let go of that darkness. They need to let go of that suffering, that pain, those sins. So I am in, let me get a little situated here. There it is. So um, if you have your Bibles open, if you want to, I'm in John 3, chapter 3, 16 to 21. Mm hmm that's right. <laughs> All right, and this is Jesus himself speaking. Where is this here? Here it is. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. All right, now, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life, who believes in him. Not someone who says, well, I believe that Jesus walked the earth and he was here and that was it. Not someone that says, well, I love Jesus, but I feel that he can't really heal me. No, that believes in him, believes in him and believes in everything that comes out of him, his very words, the very essence of who he is. And then he says, 17, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I, I need the emotion. So get the emotion. <laughs> All right, so it says... <laughs> All uh, right, on 19, and then it says, and the judgment is based on this fact. Now, every time I see the word fact or truth, I see, like, real or, like, reality. That's, that's the word I see. The judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear that their sins will be exposed. Now, just that passage right there, I would say 20. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it. And this is what happens. Like, yes, someone can say, yes, I'm a Christian. Yes, but you have to live as a Christian. You have to live through Jesus Christ. Like, just, in, just the, the title of Christian, like, can you, like, you have Christ and then in, and then if you have, and then if you look at the title of American, you have the title America and then, well, America in, but the thing is, like, if you are truly a Christian, then you know Jesus Christ, you know who he is, you know how he lived, you know what he went through, um, and you kind of, you just embrace his ministry, every word he speaks. 
and what he had to go through. All right. Thank you. Um, okay, and then number 21 says, but those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that what they are, they are doing, what God wants. Uh, 21. All right, so I wrote this down. That your first obedience to God is to come to Jesus. That's your first obedience. That's what the Holy Spirit revealed to me. After realizing who Jesus is, that's your first obedience. Because he says, come to me if you want life. All right. And then if you turn to John chapter 8, 12 to 20, uh, I have some more about about the light who is Jesus. And then um, this was after, um, after they were gonna stone uh, Mary Magdalene. And then Jesus, uh, Jesus, didn't, Jesus didn't want that to happen. said, okay, which one of you are without sin? All right, so says here in 12, it says, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Notice it says, if you follow me, if you follow me, not if you come and visit me on a Sunday, not, not if you come and just worship me on a Sunday or you just praise me on a Sunday. No, not just that. It says, if you follow so if you follow Jesus Christ, then, then that means you have faith, you have trust in Jesus Christ. You're relying on him, depending on him to lead your life. That's, that's faith right there, following him. And then it says, the Pharisees replied, you are making those claims about yourself. Such testimony is not valid. That hit me last night. Just that. Even though it would like, doesn't mean much to maybe someone else, but the Pharisees supply, you're making such claims about yourself, such testimony is not valid. A lot of people say this today, and they don't have to be in a high position or anything. Jesus makes all these claims that he is the son of God and that he can give everyone life, he, that he can heal everyone spiritually or physically, emotionally, um, mentally, um, because hey, everything was made through Jesus, for Jesus, everyone was made through Jesus and for Jesus, amen? So, but there are some who like to, after hearing these claims from Jesus, they say, you know, again, I'm not talking about people who are non-believers, I'm talking about those who are believers, they hear all the claims, and then what happens is, is that they say, I don't know. I don't believe all that. I mean, like, I don't think you can really heal me. I mean, I think my suffering, my sin so bad, I, I don't know. I mean, he can heal that other person who had that testimony, but I don't know about me. You know. So we have to realize, we have to put our faith into work so that he can work in our lives. All right. So, and then it says 14, Jesus told them, those claims are valid even though I make them about myself, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you don't know this about me. You judge me by human standards. Again, no, you judge me by human standards, but I do not judge anyone. Again, people say that, some people say that Jesus, uh, Jesus ain't powerful enough to, to help me out. Jesus ain't, you know, Jesus doesn't, doesn't have that much power. He, he, can't, he can't take away my darkness. He can't do it. Because they're on a human standard. They're not on a godly standard. They're not, they don't have a godly mind quite yet. Instead, they are still have a worldly mind. And then it says on 16, is it 16? Yep. 
And if I did, my judgment would be correct in every respect because I am not alone. The Father who sent me is with me. Your own laws say that if two people agree with something, their witness is accepted as a fact. I am one witness, and my Father who sent me is the other witness. Now, besides just those two witnesses, who is the Father, God, and Jesus himself there, what other witnesses? Here's the question. What other witnesses were there that said that he is the Son of God? Yeah, the Holy Spirit. Um, not in the beginning, but just like when in in the ministry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bob, um, John the Baptist. Um, I would say his disciples, even though they had some trouble believing, but um, after some time, they they did believe that he was the Son of God. Mm-hmm. And then I got one more passage. Yeah, Ephesians, if you turn to Ephesians chapter 5, 1 to 14. And it talks about the example of how we're supposed to live for Christ. Because again, uh, there are a lot of people just in, like sometimes I have to learn how to, not to be so frustrated, like, how can, how can they not see the light? How can they not understand Jesus? How can they not, you know, how can they not embrace Jesus? And, and they just embrace the darkness, you know? And, go ahead, yeah, you're good. Amen. Amen. Yes. So we definitely know that Jesus is always there. I mean, like, I'll say this. Listen, me personally, I don't like, I hate to make this last a little too long. I hope I don't ram on. But um, listen, like, me personally, I don't like pity parties. What are pity parties? Yeah, yeah, that's pity parties. Someone is having trouble. Someone says, hey, you know, I'm having trouble with this, and I j- I'm just not feeling good. So, you know, they call Christian brother or sister. They go over there, pray with them, pray over them, you know, maybe over a day or two, maybe three days. Like, okay, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. They go off. Okay. And then next week, oh, man, I'm having trouble again with the same thing. Like, okay, um, do you, do you want to pray over the phone? No, nah, just come over. Just come over. Okay. I'll pray with you. So we pray, maybe for a day or something, and then go back. Okay, you good? Okay. And then, again, a few days later, man, I, I need you again, man. Just just pray with me again. Like, listen, <laughs> you need to go to Jesus. You need to go to the Lord. Stop stop coming to me. Stop going to your friends. Okay, you already, your other friends already prayed over you, too including me, so you need to go to Jesus. That's a pity party. They, they want to feel sorrow from people. And yes, yes, that's good. You know, you're going to your friends, your family. That's fantastic, you know, to those who are godly. But at some given point in time, they can't always be there. You have to always go to someone who is higher. You have to go to someone who has more power. Yeah, I mean, like, yes, you know, we have, you know, we get power from Jesus Christ, yes, but you have to go straight to the source. You can't go to, you know, a level down, amen. So, um, but Ephesians chapter 5, I want you all to check this out. Uh, 1 to 14, yeah, it says, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do because you are his dear children. Imitate God. Notice it doesn't say, just um, imitate yourself and live your life however you want to and just believe in God and that's it. No, 
It says imitate God. And in order for you to imitate God, you got to read and study your Bible. You have to. There is no other way about it. Mm -hmm. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love. Following the example of Christ. Following the example of Christ. So you got imitating God in everything you do, and then you're following the example of Christ. And then it says, he loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. And then it says, let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed amongst you. And then I looked up the word impurity. Uh, it may say something different in your version, but here. Impurity. It means contamination, pollution, uncleanliness, corruption, sin, wickedness, and dishonor. Dishonor. Either you're dishonoring yourself or even dishonoring God. And then I'm on, yes, halfway through three. It says, such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. So I'll say this, you should be thanking God every single day, every morning. Even more so, I'll say this, you should be giving yourself to God every morning. Say, Lord, where do you want me? How do you want me to talk? Where, oh, how, how, who do you want me to go to? You, you should be like that. You, you should be exactly, that's how you serve. That's how you obey. And then it says number five, you can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God for a greedy person is an idler, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in things these people do. For once you were full of darkness. Every single one of us were full of darkness. <laughs> but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Amen. So, so if someone comes along that says that doesn't really follow Jesus Christ that much and they say you know I'm a good person man because you know what because I do good things and just ask them okay yeah, well, I, I <laughs> yeah that's what mm -hmm, that's that's the normal <laughs> that's normal some pe people say right? but like but like um, it shouldn't be like that say okay are you following Jesus or are you following yourself are you following God's goodness, or are you following your goodness? Which is better? Like, is your goodness up to the standard of God's goodness? So, but let me continue reading. I'm going to run out of time a little bit. Uh, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. That means you need to examine what pleases the Lord, what pleases God. And again, in order to do that, you got to study the word you have to and then it says take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness instead expose them it is shameful to even talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them for the light makes everything visible that is why it says awake O sleeper rise up from the dead and Christ will give you light now <coughs> exposing, exposing evil in, in the darkness. Straight up, there's only two, there's like two ways that the Holy Spirit showed me. One, put, uh, someone can go straight to Christ and say, say, okay, Lord, I'm not good at all. Lord, point me in the right direction. And the Lord would show them through scripture, show them through the Holy Spirit, you know, and show them, hey, listen, these are the things that are not good. You need to stay away from those things. And then there's the other way in which, in which sometimes uh, 
I get persecuted for, <laughs> for, uh, for telling someone, and, hey, listen, um, you're supposed to stay away from that. You're not supposed to be doing that. I mean, you are of a Christ-like mind. And I try to bring... <laughs> Sometimes. Holier than thou. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. So, so those are the two ways. Either they go straight to the Lord and say, Lord, fix me. Or someone who has the light of the Lord says, listen, you're not, this ain't good for you. And they may get, and I'll tell you this, they may get offended, they may get, you know, upset, mad, but when they walk away and go home, they're going to think about it. They're going to dwell on it. Amen. <laughs> so, <laughs> but just to end this, Put all your faith, all your trust in Jesus Christ, right? Listen, don't expect Jesus Christ just to work without your faith. If you have no faith, he can't work. If he, if you put your faith to work, he'll put in his work. Amen. And then, and then I wrote down, Get a breakthrough. So if Jesus, ooh, so if you, mm, I don't know how to say this because Holy Spirit just hit me up. So if someone is in darkness or if anyone's in darkness, any kind of darkness, they can't get out of something or they can't get away from something. Listen, if you come to Jesus, I guarantee you with all his promises, there's a reason that this book is so thick because it has so many examples of people breaking through because of the Lord. And therefore, if you're not getting a breakthrough, it's because there's something hindering your faith. You're still staying in that darkness. You're still clinging to that darkness. You're still clinging to that secret hiding place, that secret place that you feel safe. But God's saying, come on, let's go. But if you're not reaching your hand out to grab his hand, then how's he gonna how's he gonna bring you out of the darkness? How's he gonna bring you out of that corner? How's he gonna bring you out of that secret place that you have? How are you gonna get that breakthrough? 